So we finally meet. <laughs> everyone and welcome to Diamonds of Craft where I make things. My name is Sarah and I just wanted to say a quick hello for my very first YouTube video. I know you're not here for me though. I have closed captions for the hard of hearing or if you just plain can't understand me. It happens. Anyway, I know you want to know how I made her so here we go. So I bought the biggest doll I could get my hands on which was this 17 inch Monster High Dracula doll because she is massive and Lady Dimitrescu is also massive. She was perfect. To remove the paint off the face, all you need is some acetone or nail varnish remover that has acetone in it. That works fine too. Mine has 99% in it and it does the trick just fine. Now that her face is clean, we need to do something about her hair. I would have kept this hair because it is the right colour and it is in good condition but these pink bits just need to come right off. And if you're gonna try this yourself you'll want to cut the hair as close to the scalp as you possibly can. You can use sharp scissors or a razor but you know as long as the doll somewhat resembles that baby head from Toy Story 1 you're golden. So. The plan was to take this doll's head off so that I could scoop out the stubble from the inside. And you can do that by dunking the heads in boiling water or just using a hairdryer to warm up the vinyl. And it should come off, it'll, it'll pop right off. But I don't know if it was whether I was too weak on this day or the doll's head wasn't warm enough, but it was just not a playing ball. It just would not come off, I don't know why. Anyway doesn't matter because there are other ways that we can get stubble out of the head. All we need to do in this instance is to perform a minor surgery. So what you need to do is just get a scalpel blade or exacto knife and cut a gaping hole in the back of her head. This just opens up the head so that you can get a good look at what's on the inside which is absolutely nothing. But really we can then get out all the stubbly bits and scoop them out that way. However, this hair was not glued in place, it's been melted. So it took me many an hour to remove all the little tracks from the head. Don't worry if you rip any of the seams when you're pulling all the hair out because that can be glued back together, not a problem. I decided to give her a little once over with the tweezers just to get rid of any of the stray hairs that were still sticking out of the scalp glue it back up and you're done. So as we know, one of the most important things about this doll is going to be her chest. I didn't want her to be top heavy and topple forwards under the weight of massive boobs, so I bulked out the majority of her chest with silk clay. Now, silk clay is very strange to work with, but it is really light and we want to keep this doll light. I also decided that this doll didn't have enough of a bum to accurately represent this nine foot woman. So I'm just doing the same thing here. To smooth this all out, I used epoxy sculpt over the silk clay. Thankfully, as the silk clay did its job, I only needed a thin sheet of this stuff to cover everything. Aside from just smoothing over the base silk clay layer, the epoxy sculpt actually helped give her more shape. So I spent quite a while sculpting the chest to actually look like a chest. The smoother you can make your epoxy whilst it's still wet, the better, really. I find if I spend time trying to smooth everything out whilst it's in that stage, 
I don't have to awkwardly wrestle with the doll too much afterwards to try and sand everything down. To help the smoothing process along a bit, I dipped a cotton pad into water and used that on the edges. I also used it to get rid of my fingerprints that I've made whilst I've been sculpting. I just repeat the same process for here behind as well. And here she is in her full glory and I think she looks pretty good. Sanding is inevitable though, sadly. But the great thing about sanding is once you've sanded everything down, then it looks like it's part of the doll. And that's really what we're going for here. Now, I didn't want to bulk up her hips with clay. The reason being is one, because it's difficult to make that look good, but two, because the joints and articulation would be compromised. So to get around this, I took inspiration from how the drag queens give themselves hips and made up some shorts with hip pads in them. Okay, now it is time to paint the body. And I decided to use these two makeup sponges to apply the paint. I did try this on a different doll first, just to see how it went on, and it was okay, it ended up okay. I wanted to start with a small part first, so I pulled off her arms. I dipped the tip of the sponge in some water so that the paint might go on a little more evenly and then I just dabbed for my life. This is what I've ended up with after a few coats and you can see the difference in the colour of the arms. It worked reasonably well, I don't think it's any faster than using a paintbrush and watered down acrylics, but I wanted to try it and I think it did the job alright. Here she is, fully recolored and sewn into her fancy hip pants. I did also repaint her scalp black, even though later on I made her a wig cap. It just looks nice and neat, you know? For the hands, I decided to paint those black because she's got her leather gloves on. So these are going to be her weaponless hands, I guess? Since she does have blades that extend from her fingertips, I used this wire to judge how long I wanted them to be. I didn't want them to come from these fingers though, as I wanted to make her another set of hands. So I want her to have bladeless hands and full on blade finger hands. Uh, to make the new ones, I just sculpted them out of polymer clay. I poked the bits of wire into the fingertips and I really should have put this bacon bond on before I did that, but I didn't. So I just popped a bit on each finger. So when I put them into bake, it gives it a little bit of extra strength. Baked, painted and finished, they look pretty scary as they are. I went back and forth a few times wondering how to make her finger blades. There was a lot of discarded tin can in that process and in the end I decided to draw around the wire, cut that out and down into a more bladey shape and then I coloured the red side of this unnamed can silver with my silver pen to finally super glue each blade onto their respective fingers. I did make two hands for her, and I bloodied up the blades on one of them. The dress was a particular challenge for me, as my brain isn't wired to make clothes patterns. But since I gave her extra boobage, and this dress is kind of a weird one, I had to do my best. I made a mock-up out of a pillowcase so that I could amend the pattern as I went and when I was happy I cut the pieces out of this sheer sort of fabric. It's the underside for an even more sheer fabric that I wanted to use on top and with both of these together the dress won't be see-through. 
I did not trust myself to put this fabric through my sewing machine. Instead, I made the wonderful decision to hand stitch the whole thing. Um, on one hand, I'm glad I did that. On the other hand, my fingers really hurt. Unfortunately, as expected, the paint did start to chip on her joints and all the parts that are in contact with each other. But the only part I'm worried about is the skin that will show. Before I can add any colour to this girl, I sprayed her twice with Mr. Super Clear Sealant. To blush her body, I'm using Faber Castell Soft Pastels with a mini set of makeup brushes that I bought specifically for doll customising. I think they're eyeshadow brushes, but they're really great for tiny faces. I know this is everyone's favourite part of the doll customising process. The face up is always great fun and it's even better on such a big doll. There is so much space to work. I always start with the eyes and I always use a brown pencil no matter what colour my doll is. I just need to get the shape of her eyes down and this time I'm going for a slightly hooded eye to make her look a little more sultry. Can't forget those big yellow irises. I wanted her to have a bit of an open mouth smirk. You know like how you see models for lipstick adverts do it? That's generally the idea I was going for. To add a bit of depth to the irises, I'm outlining them in a more orange colour so the yellow doesn't get lost in the white sclera. I love her vampy makeup. It is the type of eye that I usually go for on myself. You know, red eyeshadow and a hideous amount of eyeliner. I absolutely love it. Time to try and make this eyebrow relate to the other eyebrow. Never managed to do it right on myself, but I'll let you be the judge on if they look like they're part of the same family or not. So I am using Derwent Intense Pencils and I do enjoy the fact that you can lift the pigment straight off the pencil and use it like paint or ink. A couple of eyelashes, a few highlights on the lips and we can move on. To make her wig, I glue chunks of this around her together until I have enough. Once I have those, I am using these metal straws to curl the hair, as saran hair only curls with a boil wash. I learnt that the hard way. I need grips to keep the hair in place, some ice water and some boiling water. Then I take one weft, curl it around the straw and secure it with a grip. Then I just pop it in the boiling water and ice water for a few seconds each and leave it to dry. Once I uncurled them, they looked like this. Like I mentioned earlier, I did make a wig cap for this girl, as I was not about to reroute her and I need parts of the hair to be hidden by it. I'll explain that when we get there. To start with, I glued the wefts from the bottom upward. As the curls are quite long and her hair is rather short, I cut the curls to size as I was gluing them on. Then I glued the offcut curls to fill the space. I ended up doing this more often than gluing the already glued wefts to the cap. As she will be getting a hat, I didn't want the top of her head to be bulky with wefts. 
so I glued these longer parts up to the part line and stuck her hair flat to the cap. Then on the other side of her hair I glued the same kind of wets back from the hairline of the cap. This is why I needed the cap, so that once this part was done I could just tuck the ends of the wets underneath the cap and glue them onto the inside to finish it. And that's her hair done. To make the hat, I used some black thermoplastic for the top, heating that up with a hairdryer and moulding it to her head so it fit perfectly. For the brim, I used this faux leather material, but the reverse side out. Um, I painted a little sample of this side black to see how it would fit, and it worked out reasonably well, as her hat isn't leather and this matches that sort of fabric. For reinforcement, I wanted to put the wire around the outside of the brim. I glued it between the layers so that it would be hidden. And then I stitched the layers together. And to hide all of those unsightly seams, I glued this bit of cord around the whole brim had some flair and the hat is done. For her necklace it was made up of whatever I could find lying around. Uh, this button looks to be the perfect size for a pendant and using floral wire I figured out a way to string it all together. Finally, we just need to make her shoes. I could have gone without this part as we'd never see them in the game, or at least I never saw them in the game. So I just lopped off the heels to the only pair of shoes that I had for a 17 inch doll. Marked a stiletto heel with the toothpick, glued that in place and used another round of epoxy sculpt to finish it off. I painted them black to match all of her other accessories and, and added some pearl embellishments. Oh, and I glued a massive pearl to the front because why not? And then the shoes are complete too finish off she just needs some eyelashes gloss to the eyes and lips and she is done If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. If you did like this and you want to see more from me, subscribe, I think you've got to do that, or, you know, ring my bell. I hope you enjoyed watching that video as much as I enjoyed making this girl. If you are inspired to do your own, do it. If you are inspired because you did not like the way I did it, do it. I want to see that. I want to see what you come up with. Tag me on Instagram if you do, because I'd love to see it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. 
Be kind in the comments, though. Nobody likes a dick in the comments. Just saying. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. I need Jenny. Come back.